This video is going to take a look at how to install Help Desk Premier, which is a relatively simple process that you can do on Windows Server or on a desktop, such as a Windows 7 machine. You can install it on a laptop for evaluation purposes if you wish. Um, your system requirements other than that are that you need IIS installed, and if you don't have IIS installed, um, it's a fairly simple process. You can go to, in, on a server, you can go to Add Roles within Server Manager. You'll see we're running Server Manager here. You can go to Add Roles, and there's a wizard that you'll walk through just to install Web Server IIS. On a Windows 7 machine, for instance, it's going to be under Control Panel. Um, when you install programs and features, uh, you can go to Windows Components, and it'll have Internet Information Services there as well. So it's very easy to install. Give us a call if you have any questions or need any help with that. You're also going to need SQL Server. So for this demonstration, we're going to show you SQL Server Express, uh, which we already have running here, already started. Um, you can download this. It's free. Uh, it's SQL Server Express 2008 R2 is the one we're using. You can also use 2012 if you wish. Um, basically, it's going to walk you through a wizard. We're going to stop and start this to show you a couple of key screens so that you get your settings correct if you don't already have SQL Server installed and following these steps will make it compatible with Help Desk Premier. So once you get the SQL Server installation wizard running, which we started from our desktop here after downloading, you'll go to New Installation or Add Features. And it's going to take a while here, so as I say, we'll stop and start and show you the key screens that you need to pay attention to. Okay, so as you go through the wizard, you'll, you'll accept the license agreement and so on, and you'll get to this screen. You're basically going to pick everything available, which would be your, your database engine services. You really don't need replication, but it doesn't hurt to install it, and then management tools. In case there's any issues that you need to get into the database directly, or you want to do any custom reporting, things like that. So you'll want to have the management tools, which allows you access to the database. From there, we'll just keep going through the wizard and show you other screens. When you get here, it'll ask you if you want a default instance or a named instance. For purposes of our example, we'll use a named instance, which will default to SQL Express. This just means when you reference the database, you'll have an instance name after it, such as slash SQL Express. And we'll show you that as we move along and get to the part where you configure Help Desk Premier to run with SQL Server. Then we get to these uh, service accounts that you need to install, and you'll pick what account you want it to run under. Uh, so you can pick system here, uh, local system here for the browser. You do want to make sure that the, the browser is set to automatic. This is going to make it a lot easier for you to find your server when you configure Help Desk Premier. If you don't have the browser name running, you're going to need to know the server name and the instance name and so on. This will just automatically look for SQL Server instances that are running and it will find this one. Um, these accounts are just built-in accounts to Windows that will allow SQL Server to run, these services to run. Then you get to the next window. Make sure to pick Mixed Mode, SQL Server Authentication, and Windows Authentication. Help Desk Premier will not run with Windows Authentication Mode in most cases. Uh, it is technically possible in some cases, but we really recommend that you have Mixed Mode, which would be a normal installation anyway. You would want to have... Um, a user ID and a password is basically what that will do for you. So mixed mode, the SA account is your default account. So you can just put in any password that suits you and that you're going to remember. Um, SQL Server administrators, we're going to leave it defaulting to this test account here on this virtual machine. You would, it would default to whoever's installing SQL Server. You can add other accounts as necessary. Now we're going to go through the rest of the wizard. Uh, this will take a little while, so we'll come back when it's done. And that's it for the installation of SQL Server. So you can just close that window, and you can apply Windows updates to get any updates to SQL Server as well, uh, which is really outside of the scope of this video, but you can do that to keep it up to date. From there, you're going to start the installation of Help Desk Premier. So you'll download that from our site if you haven't already. Um, in the evaluation copy is available on the site. Uh, when you purchase, we'll send you a production license. The executable will have HTTP web and a build number following it. And this is a very basic installation wizard that I'm sure you've seen uh, similar ones many times before. You're going to run through this. If you don't have IIS installed, it'll stop you and tell you you have to quit the wizard, install it, and start it up again. 
If you don't have uh, .NET 4 installed, it'll stop you uh, to tell you that, but it will handle that installation on its own. It will go ahead and do that automatically, but it will tell you that first. So we're going to go through this wizard, accepting the license agreement if you agree with it. Then you go through the installer. When it gets through the wizard, it takes a few minutes. It, it has to do a few things as far as, as you see now, the Windows services or um, doing some other compiles to make the application faster. Um, so it, it may take three to five minutes depending on the speed of your system, but you'll, you'll see a window at all times that tells you what it's doing, and then we'll come back when that finishes. Okay, so the installation wizard for Helpless Premiere finished, so we'll just click Finish as you would any other wizard. And you'll see this Helped Us Premiere Database Configurator come up. This can also be accessed under Programs, Brightbox Solutions. You'll see the Helped Us Premiere Configuration Manager. So it's a, it's a separate program that's running that gets launched at the end of the install, but you, you want to be able to go back to it if you want to change your database, maybe go from an evaluation database to a production one, and so on. Now earlier we talked about the browser service and having that start automatically. The reason is if you click this button on the right of the server name, it's going to go out and search for any instances of SQL Server that it can find running. It's going to come back and populate the dropdown. Now if you're familiar with SQL Server, you may know your server information already and it's fine to go ahead and type it in there. If you don't, this will bring up a list. In this case, running it on a VM here, we have one instance running which you have the computer name followed by the instance name, which in this case is slash SQL Express, as we also discussed earlier. Then you're going to put in your login, your password for your database, and database name. This is critical. You do not want to go out and create your own database. Uh, we sometimes see where a customer will go out to SQL Server Management Studio, and they'll build it, build their own database, and then they'll refer to it through here. So they might come out here and you know right-click and say new database, and then go back and refer to that database. You don't want to do that. We'll build the database for you as long as you give us the server name, the login, and the password. We're going to put in a database name that doesn't exist already. So we're going to call ours Help Desk. We hit save. It'll prompt us to create the database. We say yes, we want to create it. So it's physically going out into SQL Server and building it. Now it's asking, would you like sample data included in the database? We're going to put say yes because we're installing this as an evaluation. If you were installing this for production, you would say no. You don't want a production database pre-populated with pretend customers, pretend tickets, and so on. But for our purposes, we're going to say yes. So now it's going to go out and write some sample rows to the database. Configuration successful. We say OK and it closes. Now we can run the application under Programs Brightbox Solutions Helped Us Premier Web. So we run that and we see we're running it locally. So we're just going to run localhost and it's going to bring up the correct URL. If you're running it from a server, if you're on if you're installing it on a server and you're going to another computer to access it, you'll obviously refer to it by the server name slash helped us premiere. So basically replacing localhost with the server name. Because it's an evaluation copy, it's going to default to demo demo for the username and the password. If this were a production copy, that would not be there. It would be blank and you would need to enter it. When you first install a production copy, you can still enter demo demo to get you into the software and then you can change that user ID or delete it, whatever you wish to do. Now again, you can run this on Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. Um, those are the browsers that it's tested with and certified with. Any of those are fine. Now, one last thing to go over is if you want to use this or if you're getting this for production purposes, you want to import your production license. So we're going to go to system settings to do that. So first we went to admin or over here on the side panel, you can click administration, same thing. And then we're going to go to system settings. And then in the system settings, you'll see the license tab. So we have an evaluation license in here we can also import a production license by just clicking import and we're going to pick our production license which has been emailed to the customer click open and it'll import that uh, then we're going to click save 
and their production license will be stored in the database and they'll have a production copy.